Donald Trump. <laughs> um, and I think Donald Trump belongs in this sort of new age of populism that saw Brexit, that has seen interest rate caps here. And currently, his odds to win on the prediction markets are 34.4%. Um, and this is, has gone up. And I think, really, it's a trading buy. If I was a trader, if I was trading Trump versus Clinton, I think that, that that has room to go higher. And I think the markets are underestimating that this really is a 50-50 bet. And if things go in his favor, he's going to win. What do I mean by things going in his favor? It could be anything. It could be an attack in the US 48 hours before the election, and he points and says, I told you so. Could be anything, but I think it's a 50-50 toss-up. And it has tremendous implications for how America operates in the world and for the rest of the world. A couple of weeks ago, I was listening to the BBC, and the BBC was saying that, you know, we've got to fact-check Donald Trump. And they fact-checked him, and what he said was incorrect, but it doesn't matter. We're in a different environment today. And that environment was described by, by an American uh, army general who was asked to describe the future of warfare. And this is what he said in, 19, in, tw in 2012. His, what he said, it, he said it in 1996. One of the defining bifurcations of the future will be the conflict between information masters and information victims. Information warfare will not be couched in the rationale of geopolitics, but will be spawned like any Hollywood drama out of raw emotions, hatred, jealousy, greed. Emotions rather than strategy will set the terms of in information warfare struggles. And you see that all around the world. It's not about the facts. It's about the emotions. For example, when Hillary Clinton had this attack, the, the, uh, uh, what people are calling pneumonia, but others are saying was not, and uh, <laughs> I had a conversation with Ian again about this. Ian saying, no, she's just getting nervous that she's going to lose, and she passed out. <laughs> but a lot of people, for example, were saying on the internet, this was a body double. And this is what I mean about information warfare. Whether it is a body double or not is not relevant. This is a whole bunch of people are thinking that. And to, you can't sway them. And the final point on this whole digital side is that if you think about it, what has changed is this. And this is from an article in Bloomberg. They call it a digital panopticon, where at any moment our actions may be observed videotaped and uploaded to the internet anywhere right even here <laughs> the web has democratized publishing creating what law professor glenn reynolds has dubbed an army of davids willing and able to attack the powerful nor that the amazing proliferation of data and records on the web has given those davids an array of weapons far more powerful than a slingshot. Why has the news not reached Hillary Clinton? But really, if you think about it, the same thing has happened here. Something could, you could be having a coffee with somebody and anyone could take a photo of that. Before you know it, it's all over the internet.